It's Doodlebud back again with another fountain pen review. This time it came from me from Ian Schoen at Schoen Design. I'm checking out his pocket Altum pen. Now what makes today's video a little extra unique, I'm captioning this the engineering trifecta, is this is an engineered plastic. Ian Schoen, who runs Schoen Design, he is an engineer. So he designs all of these and runs the machines himself. So engineer design, engineer made. And then the review on the other side of this camera, you got Doodlebutt, he's an engineer. So we have engineered plastic, engineer design, engineer review. You can see the trifecta we got going on. So let's check out this pen and talk about it. Now, Altum is an engineered plastic, has a proper name. Sometimes it goes by what's called PEI, which is polyethylamide. Uh, the cool thing about this stuff is it's very, very strong and very durable. So most like acrylic style pens, if you had an acrylic pen like this and you dropped it, good chance... Uh, you know, you could have some cracking or the whole thing could actually just shatter. So with this also too, because it's so much stronger, you can like, look how thin the wall is on this pen. You can pull that off using Altum. So it's a really, really cool plastic. Uh, it's also used in a lot of some kind of scientific instru uh, instruments, even I believe in some aerospace as well. So it's a really, really cool material. And it's also chemically resistant. Of course, you know, there is always some chemical that'll trash it. But for example, with this pen, if you really want to get it super clean, you can use your IPA, your isopropyl alcohol. And um, yeah, you can't, you, you do not do that on other pens. So we're going to go through this, but uh, I've been using this for over a week now. And I tell you, the thing hasn't failed on me absolutely once yet. It, you could see the O-rings in here. So we've got some serious sealage going on. And it is also, it takes your regular cartridges so if you want to undo it and, and put a cartridge in and pop it in there away you go your standard international short cartridges just fit it in there no big deal but what's neat with this is it's also geared up to be an eyedropper so i'm going to do that what i'm also going to do is i'm going to chuck this in the uh in the vacuum chamber i got going on we're going to fill this up i'm going to do it like sort of halfway sort of worst case scenario and we're going to take this on our pretend airplane with us to do some testing and see if this thing will leak or not leak. My bet, I don't think it's going to drip a single drop. This thing is sealed so well, it's really crazy. I'm going to get into the details because there's some really fine details in this pen that are super easy to miss unless you know what you're looking for. So what we'll do, I'll uh, since I got it kind of undone, uninked here, I'm going to take it all apart, just show you the bits, how to go back together, do some measurements, weights, then we'll uh, start having some fun. So obviously you unscrew the cap, unscrew the back, and then you can just slip out the nib unit as well. This unscrews. And I got my silicone grease here handy because it's all cleaned. Um, if you're going to fully disassemble it, uh, the pen like this, it's definitely a good idea to put just a touch of lube here on to the seals. And these are really, really quality O-rings. So very simple. Everything comes apart nice and easy um, for cleaning and, and purposes and all that as well. Uh, but what I'll do, I'll put just a touch of grease on some of these. We'll put it back together. Just using some of that Twisby grease from the Eco Pen, putting a little bit on the Q-tip here. And just everything is a super light coating just to ensure everything fits together, nothing's binding. And this also helps promote longevity of the seals. So Altum is a pretty light material. Let's check out what this pen is without the ink in it. We got 11.3 grams. We'll fill it up in a little bit and I'll check it out and we'll measure the difference. But before I ink it up and we get it going, I thought I'd just run you through, get you some close-ups of the pen so you can give it a look. So you can see on this one here, we have threads on the back. Very obviously you undo the pen. Well, let's just, let's try to count the turns here. This will be a little bit tricky because there's no reference mark. Well, how about we make a reference mark? I'll use a permanent Sharpie because you can clean this with IPA. So let's just make a mark right here, line it up with the nib point. There we go. You wouldn't, you wouldn't typically do that on your standard fountain pen, but I have total faith in the material and the cleaning. So let's uncap this again. Man, the focus just wanders. There we go. So we got one, two revolutions on the point, and then onto the back of the pen here as well. Let's just line this up when we engage. One, yeah, two rotations to get it on there as well. It goes from one of those small pens to a large pen. I'll compare it with some other ones I have as well, but, uh, but let's, you know, it's right there. It's nice and dry now. Yep, it's permanent, not going anywhere. Let's see if we can get that off. Pour a little of this IPA there in the cap. Of course, drip it everywhere, get to the other side of that Q-tip, and uh, wish me luck here. I think this should come off, no problem. Oh, look at that. That's not magic. That just comes off, no problem. So, quick note, while I am uh, I got the isopropyl alcohol out, the whole pen is safe. You could soak it in there, 
but don't do that with the feed. The ABS, this is, it's not a friend there, but then there is always an Achilles heel. And uh, like I said, some chemicals aren't too great with certain uh, plastics. You actually want to avoid anything with ammonia in it. So your Windex, if you've been using that, that has ammonia or your pen wash, a lot of times they have ammonia in it as well. It's not the best for Altum. You can have problems. I haven't tested it myself, but uh, I'll see if I can flash it on the screen. If not, I'll definitely put a link down in the description. But there is a site that I use whenever I'm using different plastics or I'm looking into things and thinking about cleaning them. It just shows uh, a whole range of different materials and all the different solvents and what is safe and what is not safe for that particular material you're looking at. And so on there, they highlight ammonia. Don't use it on Altum. I got a few pens ready for a quick size comparison, but let's just give you some dimensions when the pen is like this. The overall length with it capped is 94 millimeters. You uncap it and just have it unposted. So just the main body of the pen back to the tip of the nib is 87.3 millimeters. You cap the pen, so now it's full length. This puts out a full 138 and a half millimeters. And then as far as diameter, so the overall pen body, so the diameter of the main pen body here is 14.2 and your grip section, it's uh, at its thinnest, man, the focus is just garbage today. There we go, at the thinnest, the uh, diameter is 10.2 and the widest it's 11.2. So just a one millimeter difference. Just to give a size comparison, the pocket pens I have around here, this is the Gravitas pocket pen in stainless. We got the Shone Design in Altum a couple of Enso pocket pens, the titanium with my little custom job and a aluminum anodized one. I do have a ebonite one, but it's at my office. I forgot it for the review. And finally, we have a Kaveco Sport, the standard one. Let me pop off the caps, post them, and then do a comparison that way. Here we are now with the same pens posted. So you can see the, uh, the Altum one, very, very close in size to the Enso pocket Puma. The Gravitas one is just a hair longer and the Caveco is the shortest one there. But yeah, I like the uh, the overall dimensions of the pen. It's a little bit thicker. You can see the Gravitas is a little bit thinner in the body. The Ultim one here is a little bit thicker, very similar again to the Pocket Puma. What I'm gonna do now is just get into some of the finer details I noticed with this pen, which are things, you know, you would sort of, you would sort of miss if you didn't know what to look for. So there's some pens I see that have O-rings on them, but what you don't want to have is have threads go over top of the O-rings and chew them. So they put them in the wrong spot. Now I'll, I'll take this off here and then I'll show you what I mean. But so you can see here that the sealing surface on the O-ring will be this part right here. And this fitment that he gets to go with this O-ring, that has to get dialed in on every setup because it is just absolutely perfect. So when this comes in, and that O-ring engages, the threads are in there, but then that flat surface is gonna hit that O-ring and you can feel just that perfect tactile feel. You can even see the O-ring uh, just sort of compress just a little bit, see that? So it just opens it up and puts that pressure on there and just gives a proper seal. We are gonna test that seal, but that fitment there, uh, I know, you, you know, from the outside, you might not know, but this takes a lot of time. He's even was showing me the, the gauges he has to check all that. That is adjusted uh, before you hit the go button. And he sort of does that throughout the pen. So there may be, let's say there's five or six critical fitments where everything has to be just so. He'll start with one of those, dial it in perfect, and then move on to the next one, dial that one in perfect, and go, 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 until all of them are exactly where they should be, and then he'll start the run. So same thing, I've seen it where the O-ring is here, but then it's like right in the threads where they have like a little groove down at the bottom, but like threads come right in there and just rip O-rings to pieces. He, he doesn't mess around with that. So the threading's done up here, the ceiling's down, down here, we got a nice, again, flat spot on there. So when you put this on, the O-ring is, you can feel it just hit there and then it compresses just a little bit. And that's how you're gonna get just a phenomenal seal. I was trying to decide on an ink. I had the sample I got from uh, Gold Spot a little while, this Diamine Onyx Black. I thought, oh, that might look sharp with this. But then I realized I got, this is my little uh, handy dandy ink holder here for the Robert Oster. I got this green olive and i gotta tell you i was playing with it on a sample just on a kleenex and it seems to match the altum pretty damn good so i think it's rare to have an ink to match the altum so well so i'm going to put in some of this green olive i'll show you how you fill it and we'll see how much it holds all right so let's get a reading again that is 
just the body itself, 7.73. So I'm going to zero it there. I got my ink lid off. This is my little uh, Fanmu ink syringe that I use. So it's got a spring in it, which is nice. So you're just going to fill this up with ink. Let it draw up some ink quite nice. There we go. I think I need to put some silicone on that one. And then, whoops, going to bump the tripod, of course. We're going to pop the body off here. And then one little thing I like to do is sort of check the ink level. So you don't want it to, to fill it all the way to the top. You put this in and you get ink everywhere. So don't go crazy. So you can see here just a little bit below those last threads. That's how high I'm going to fill the pen. So uh, doing this as best I can on camera without making a mess. We'll just put that ink in there. I can go a little more. Let's get some more. So you can see there, we're right as high as you should go really. And uh, let's put this on and give it away and see how much it holds. Okay, so how much do we got going on? Yeah, about 1.7 milliliters of ink. But what I'm going to do now before I write with it, because I'm going to put this on the airplane vacuum, and the challenge you got to deal with is the air displacement. So if we have this thing fully full of ink, we're not going to you know, observe that as much. So I'm going to actually take this off and suck out about half of the ink. So we'll fly with this pen here half full. So my audio file got corrupt while doing this part. So I just sped it up and decided to do a voiceover. This is my setup I have here to, to simulate the flying in an airplane. And the issue we have here is just differential and air pressure. So the air that's left in the pen is at atmospheric pressure when you took off, but then you go into an airplane and it's at a lower pressure. Air pressure likes to go from high to low. And if it's not sealed, the air is going to equalize and ink will get in the way and cause a giant mess. So if this pen's sealed, it shouldn't leak when it goes into my little vacuum chamber. So I pop it in. It's just made up with some parts, essentially a brake bleeder that I'm using here, dropping the pressure to what it should be around an air cab. And I have a bit of a leak. So I'm battling this a little bit, but I hold it at what uh, the standard sort of air cabin pressure is at flying altitude. I see nothing. I try to take it a little bit further and just uh, keep pumping out as much air as I can. I'm fighting a leak here, but as I look on the pen, I see nothing so far. So I took it as far as I could. Couldn't get the uh, vacuum as low as I normally like to on my other tests. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at this pen. No drips, no drops, nothing. Now on to the writing sample, which you could argue is the most important part of the pen. It hasn't disappointed anywhere as far as machining and uh, quality. It does not disappoint at all when it comes to writing. It has a medium Yovo nib on here. The tuning is perfect. The wetness is perfect. Reverse writing, yeah, it's hit and miss with every single pen unless it's ground specifically to write in reverse. But uh, whether it's cursive or nice printing, you're trying to keep things neat and tidy. It's a very comfortable pen. The lightweight makes it very nice. Your your hand isn't going to get fatigued. It, I, you know, I, I don't know if this nib has been tuned for sure, but it really feels like it has because it just hits everything absolutely proper. I have no problems with this nib whatsoever. It's really great. So I thought I did not too bad of a job of matching the ink to the pen. That's usually not my thing, but there we go. The pen has been flawless. The, the second I put ink in it, it just wrote. There's a couple little skips here. That was me. I got the camera in between my arm is around it. I'm trying to write sometimes and watch what I'm doing. So, so sometimes I miss a little bit happened down here too. But yeah, the flow is perfect. The writing's perfect. Um, very impressed with this pen. There hasn't been a single issue that has crept up at all. So let's wrap things up, give you my likes, dislikes, and end it there. So when it comes to this Shown Design Pocket Ultim pen, this is uh, the box that came in, by the way. Very, very simple. Just fits in there. Um, the pen has been absolutely flawless. I haven't had any troubles whatsoever, whether it's in... Uh, eyedropper mode or cartridge mode everything has been totally fantastic with it as far as cleaning as i mentioned uh ian has done a video on his youtube site he's got lots of great resources on there so check that out as well but essentially just a little isopropyl alcohol and uh, get yourself a q-tip so if you do have some inks that are a little bit stubborn to get out if you eyedropper or just whatever there's some splashing that happens to happen it cleans out really well and so that's a great feature with this as well the plastic, it's a very durable plastic. So I know some acrylic pens, if you drop it, you got to worry about it cracking or getting broken. With these, you know, you can chuck them around. I don't advise, you know, smashing it, 
but they're not going to crack if it pop, you know, drops out your pocket into somewhere. You might have some ink splosh around. That's normal with any pen. But if you drop it and it takes a bit of a hit, it's got to be a serious hit to uh, break the integrity of this pen. So very strong material. It's lightweight. Um, the sealing on here is fantastic. The finish of the pen, all the fitment of all these parts. Uh, you know, I've worked with precision instrumentation before. And, you know, the, the market I worked in, everything was high end. So things just had to fit perfectly. O-rings had to be compressed perfectly. Just everything had to be just so the tactile feel everything. And so I can really, really see that um, in the build quality in this pen. Even uh, one thing I forgot to show you when it comes to eyedropper, and I was doing it on camera, so I'm trying to get you an angle. But, you know, how you do it at home versus how you do it on uh, YouTube videos here, a little different. So you would un unscrew the section here from the body and you can just stand it up so because it's flat there you can stand it up and then you go ahead and get your ink dropper and you fill the pen that way and then you just you know put that down and screw the section back on so that's even a nice little detail i forgot to mention to you as well when it comes to filling the pen so there's no detail that hasn't been missed the only uh challenge with the pen if you go on to his website is the list price. So if you check out the uh, Shown Design website and go on there right now, this goes for, I believe it's 240. And then right away you might go, well, wait a second. And you look at the pocket six and then that starts off at I think about 125 and uh, goes up to maybe it's like 165 or something like that for the ones that have the matching anodized um, section. And those are absolutely gorgeous. The, the, finishes that he does with his anodizing is absolutely spectacular. I haven't seen anything that cool on any other pens. So then you go, wait a second, those are metal, all the anodizing, shouldn't that cost more? This is just plastic. And so that's where I thought I'd spend a second just to kind of fill in that differential, that gap. Um, working with this material is just going to be more costly, uh, even just when it comes to tooling. So when you're going to machine your standard aluminum, you can just get off the shelf inserts, fill in your machine where you go. They just replace them as you go if you, or if you break them. This is going to he's going to have to invest in custom tooling to pull this pen off as well. And then just to get the fitment on this as good as it is, all these threads to be dialed in perfectly, the fitment for these, uh, especially in here to get those extra bores to carry those o-rings and have those fit just perfect he's having to check that before you do your final run and dial everything in so it it is a tedious process to get a pen to this level you might not be able to appreciate it from the outside so i thought i'd give you a little sort of context onto why a pen like this would cost more now again that's regardless of the explanation that still might be way of your price range check out his site. He's got lots of other pens and especially the Pocket 6, I think, um, is a fantastic deal for the caliber of pen that you get and then all the cool custom finishes. I haven't seen a selection like that anywhere else. Thanks again to Shown Design for sending me this Pocket Altum pen for review. This thing has been really, really cool to play around with. Give him a follow on Instagram as well if you haven't. Uh, he's got all sorts of cool stuff, you know, what's what's going on with as far as new pens and all that kind of stuff and cool pictures, but also kind of gives you behind the scenes of what it's like to build these. So the other day, one of his, his machines was sort of on the fritz. He got out his thermal gun. He's pointed at boards and found one that's running hot to kind of help point in the direction of what could be a problem. So not only do you get to see cool stuff, you get to see what it's like to try to build these things. So uh, give him a follow on Instagram. Check out his site as well. And while you're at it, hit subscribe on my channel. And uh, I got some more reviews coming up, but until then, we will have to catch you next time.